In the next post-game show, presented by Tri-State Audi, visit your Tri-State area Audi dealer today. Julius Randle had 24 this afternoon, 21 in the first half. Knicks actually up by seven at the break, but Dallas erupted in the third quarter. The former Nick Tim Hardaway Jr., five third quarter threes, 17 of his 28 in the game came in the third quarter. And Luka Doncic, 19 of his 30 came in the third quarter. Dallas as a team attempts 61 threes, most they've ever attempted and the most the Knicks have ever had attempted against them in a game. 61 threes attempted. Dallas made 24, and they won 121 to 100. Great to have you with us from our Delta MSG studios. Bill Pito along with Monica McNutt and Wally Zerbiak. And the one thing that did go well today, Monica's stat of the day was on point. <laughs> How'd you know this was going to be Dallas from three-point land? Uh, unfortunately, that stat was spot on. I mean, this is what they do, right? Like, you look at the way this team plays. Luka obviously has the ball in his hands a ton. They don't play at a high pace. There's not a whole bunch of transition baskets. They live and die by the three. And tonight, they thrived by the three, Wally. Yeah, they were absolutely outstanding. It looked like at the beginning of the game, both teams just dragging a little bit in the first half. The Knicks, though, behind Julius Randle, were able to build that seven-point lead. But I said to myself, Luka Doncic can't continue to play this poorly. Mm -hmm. He was 3 for 11 in the first half. You knew he was going to get it going because he just couldn't get anything going in that first half. And Tim Hardaway Jr. had the point to prove, playing against his old team. He came into the garden, and he absolutely lit this place up. That third quarter performance, when you make five threes in the third quarter, that really helped open up the game. Then Lucas started to knock down his shots, and the Knicks' offense at times can look very stagnant, too much one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what happened in the third quarter. It's amazing, and I know this has become a theme because of the way the game is played now. Knicks up 15, lose by 21. Up seven at the half, outscored Monica in the third quarter, 40. I don't mean to laugh, but that face. I know. Uh, uh. <laughs> Dallas outscored the Knicks in the third quarter, 41-15. to 15. We are going through this together in the green room, and I'm like, Pito, basketball is a game of runs. It's 15. It's okay. It's okay. The third quarter, quarter of doom. Like, yeah. I mean, you mentioned Tim Hardaway Jr. torrid. He missed. He was five of six in the third quarter in particular. Then you got other guys getting involved. Josh Green, I remember covering this team in the playoffs last year, and it was sort of a joke if this team needed Josh Green to hit threes because that wasn't really what, he's do what he does. He's added that to his game. The ball's moving around right on cue. Luka taps in. He had 11 in the first half, finishes the ball game with 30. You just you can't have that little resistance defensively. Yeah. There just didn't really seem to be much effort on that side of the ball. It, it was shades of pickup ball as far as the Knicks defense. I know, and I just kind of could feel this coming in the first half for some reason. I just felt like Dallas wasn't playing well. They were missing some open shots in the first quarter, in the first half. And when they start kicking their game into gear, watch out. And I wanted to see what the Knicks were going to do when Dallas actually started to play well. They were mm -hmm. just playing terribly in that first half. And the Knicks just, they completely folded. They just had no answer in that third quarter. I mean, when, when Doncic started to get where he wanted to, when he started to knock down some shots, you see how good he can be. And then if he gets any type of help from his teammates, Monica, yep. like the way yep. Tim Hardaway Jr. shot the basketball and then the way Maxi Kleber played in that third quarter, playing defense and knocking down shots, I mean, this team is very dangerous. And, you know, they move the ball. They have shooters all around the court. They really have a defensive identity, too. Yes. I mean, you got guys out there like Reggie Bullock, Maxi Kleber, and Dorian Finney-Smith all on the floor. At the same time, those guys just breathe defense. That's all they're out there. They want to get stopped. They want to make it difficult on other teams. And the Knicks, I didn't see any fight mm -hmm. or resistance. Mm -hmm. I mean, in that third quarter, when Dallas started to flow and they started knocking down shots, the Knicks just look like, eh, whatever. Yeah. It's not our day. You, you and that's concerning. That's very concerning. Um, cause they, but the, and they better bounce back tomorrow night. I know you say it's the runs and it's the way the NBA game is now, but there's just something about even though a team gets hot, you got to just look like you want to stop them. And the Knicks <laughs> just look like they had no answer. Uh, and it was rough. I'm just amazing. I get, it's amazing how, how quickly these games, the, 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 well, the whole, that's, that's my the point. Three. You can't just let it happen. Yeah. As, a, as a player, you have to take it personally. You have to be like, man, this is really bothering me. And I didn't really see that from the Knicks in that third quarter. There, there's two things. The, the personality, right? Like the emotional response as a competitor. But the yes, other part exactly. of it is that is that's the nature the of the three-point ball in today's league. I mean, 
Literally, you, there's no answer for Tim Hardaway Jr. And I keep going back to that. But as a team, the Mavs shot 9 of 17 for 53% from three in that third quarter alone. And so, particularly as it is well documented, the Knicks have struggled from behind the arc. You don't have that counterpunch. And so then, I guess, maybe your competitive drive spirit is challenged and you just kind of look reserved or resolved. You know, the Knicks three-point defense is not terrible. It's not. But as we've talked about, their three-point shooting is near the so, bottom of the league. So, so that, 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 in this, the differential night to night. But it's to night. not good to give up a lot of threes. That, and I was about to say, they give up 39, which is, well, 38.9, which they is technically 61 39. They gave up 61 They gave up 61 in this game. On the season, they're averaging 39. And yes, the percentage is top 10, but they do give up a lot of three looks. Yeah, that's the thing. When you when you have that opportunity as a player and as a team to get 61 threes and get yourself into rhythm, and they were pretty good looks. I mean, this Dallas team, they break you down with Doncic, they move the ball, they get open looks from the three-point line. Like, the Knicks defense has to adjust to not allow that many looks at the basket from the three-point line. At some point, make guys step in. Yep. You know, you don't want to give up layups and dunks, obviously, but make them make some inside the arc, mid-range type stuff. You can't just let them camp out for 61 threes. That's way too many. All right, of course, the pregame storyline was Jalen Brunson going up against his former team. We've all been so impressed with Brunson, his approach and everything. Had a little bit of a hard time while well, getting into the flow a little bit. 13 points, 5 of 11. Looked like, you know, maybe he's not 100% with the quad, right. but... Not one of his, he's been so great, not one of his better games today. Mm -hmm. No, and I guarantee, you know, as, as a team, this kind of hurts the Knicks, you know, because you, you, got, you got Jalen Brunson who came over as a free agent. You know, he left a good situation in Dallas. They made the Western Conference Finals. You want to step up and perform in a Absolutely. game like this. You Absolutely. really do. You want to compete, and, you know, that's just what I didn't see, unfortunately, for this Knicks team. And it hasn't happened that often yet this season. But when Dallas started to really crank it up and turn up the screws, you know, the Knicks really didn't have an answer. And they didn't, they, they didn't compete at the level that you need to compete at, especially on your home floor. I mean, on your home floor, you got to realize teams are going to come in here and they're going to try to, to, to beat your doors off. And the Knicks right now are not taking it personally that teams are coming in here to really, you know, take their bacon out of the, uh, out of the uh, refrigerator mm -hmm. or something here. They're just yeah. getting whatever they want out of the Knicks refrigerator here on their home yeah. floor. Bacon out of the refrigerator. <laughs> they, they, they got out of the refrigerator. They, <laughs> they got the it, eggs. They got, they got everything. They got real comfortable. But you know what? I do think a sneaky story, guys. I don't know how sneaky it is, but we talked a lot about the Brunson side of this. I mean, I'm sure there's a little bit on the Dallas side. Yes, they've been very honest about how much they mitch, miss, excuse me, what Jalen Brunson brings to the table, but it's also like, oh, you left us for the, oh, we, okay, you left us? Mm -hmm. We're gonna remind you yeah. of what was here. So one team showed up in this first matchup back and the other team, not so much.